After three hard days of uh, hard fought days of basketball, and it all comes down to this: the Henry Car Crusaders taking on the St. Edmund Campion Bears for all the marbles. Hello and welcome to St. Michael's College. Rob Wong, alongside with Kurt Charter, here at St. Michael's College for the 50th annual St. Mike's Invitational Basketball Tournament here on Rogers TV. And uh, Kurt, who do you got in this uh, final? I think it's going to go right onto the wire with this one. Uh, Campion is extremely athletic. They've got. Uh, a bunch of really good players, plays, they play great defense, and Henry Carr, what can you say, for the past several years, they've been one of the best teams in the province. They have an excellent program. I think this one's going to go right down to the wire, Rob. Well, lots of uh, key players to keep an eye on in this one, and we will start with, uh, in fact, we will start with how the teams got here, and we look at the semifinals. Henry Carr taking down Pickering 67-61, while Oakwood fell to St. Edmund Campion in a very tight game, 49-46. Now, as for the uh, key players in this matchup, we'll start with the Crusaders and Jamal Grennan. Grennan is uh, very athletic. He can, he's got some major hops. Look for him to maybe throw a few down and uh, get the, the crowd into this. Um, he's got a nice outside shot if you don't cover him quickly. And um, what can I say? He's very athletic like the rest of the squad. So he's certainly someone to look for. Well, Campion being one of the uh, best teams in the GTA, that would be Oakwood, and uh, led by one of their uh, wing players, and that's Tyshawn Carter, also 23. Um, yeah, Tayshawn is, uh, for Campion, is uh, very strong and athletic, big guy, takes up a lot of space in the middle, and you've got to be really careful because he can, uh, eat, like I said, he eats up a lot of real estate in, in, in the key, and uh, will grab a bunch of rebounds for you, will we'll take care of the big man inside, so they've got to put a body on him to keep him out of the key if they hope to be successful today. All right, well, it should be a very good contest today. We'll have the opening tip-off and first quarter action when we return right here on Rogers TV. And welcome back to St. Michael's College for the championship final of the 50th annual St. Mike's Invitational Basketball Tournament between the Henry Carr Crusaders and the St. Edmund Campion Bears. And uh, Kurt, as a coach yourself, what do you tell your players before a game of this magnitude? They've got to keep the defense up. I mean, both of these teams, as I said before in the introduction, are extremely athletic. And in a blink of an eye, if you're complacent, you're going to find yourself down a bunch of points. So you've got to take care of the defense, take care of the ball, not turn it over, and just play your game, have fun. They've, they've both, both these teams have worked hard to get here. The only thing for Campion is they've beat an undefeated Oakwood team to get into this final. And sometimes after a game like that, there's a bit of a letdown. So it'll be interesting to see if they can keep up, keep their composure and keep the intensity that I saw in that Oakwood game. And it will be Carr starting with the ball first as Shane Reader puts up a three, no good. And it's ripped down by Tashawn Carter. And back come the Bears. The Bears wearing the visiting uh, navy blue with olive trim, while Carr will be wearing the home whites and blue. And it is number 13, Jeffrey Amoa, taking it to the rack for two. And it's the Bears on top, 2-0 to open this contest. Beautiful drive. Not missing a beat, though. I can still see the intensity in Campion's game here. They're, they're keeping it up. Good for them. And the Bears will start off on a 2-3 uh, defensive zone set. As a jumper from the baseline, no good there, but it's put back and in by Shane Reeder. Nice athletic move, getting that two. Back come the Bears. As Jordan Clennon dishes it off the shot, no good by the Bears, and Henry Carr picks up the rebound and will come back the other way. Click quickly ahead, all the way to the basket, no good. That was a beautiful pass, just not able to finish. Clennon quickly up the court. As Jeffrey Amawa will have the ball now. He gets a screen, goes left, drives to the paint, kicks it back out to Jane McDonald. Tried a crossover move, didn't work, had to pick up his dribble. I like McDonald's game. He was actually a mainstay and one of the keys to their win against Oakwood earlier today. Back come Henry Carr and a Shane Reeder, his pull-up jumper, no good. And the rebound taken away. And it's Carr with the finish, number 35, Nathaniel Elliott for two. 4-2, now the lead for the Crusaders. 
And back come Campion, it's Deshaun Carter with the easy lay in and we're knotted up at fours two minutes into this contest. Both of these teams are so quick. Transition defense is gonna be a key in this game. Reeder with the ball, calling out a play. Gets it over to Alfred who scored over 20 points in the last two contests, 23 and 24 respectively. As they'll work it around the perimeter, Nathaniel Elliott now with the ball. Back out to Reeder, they get it inside. It is Jamal Grennan missing the easy two. He's and not, he's not gonna miss too many of those, Robert. No, we definitely saw in the quarterfinals, uh, make that the semifinals, he was uh, quite an offensive force. And with the defensive stop here come the Crusaders. Henry Carr has several different levels of intensity and right now we're seeing them kind of feel out Campion. But before too long, I think they're going to drop the gauntlet and really turn up the defensive heat. It'll be interesting to see how Campion responds. Alfred with the jumper from eight feet out, he sinks it and the Crusaders now have a 6-4 lead. The Bears now have it stolen away quickly up the court and it is out of bounds, last touched by Henry Carr and it'll be the Bears ball. A Little bit of half court pressure there by the Crusaders, almost getting a turnover there. Clendon inbounds the ball as Jaden McDonald will bring it up the court. McDonald guarded by Isaac, gets a screen. On the switch now he has Grennan, nice crossover move, fadeaway jump from 10 feet out, no good. And rebound by Alfred. Little nice move there by Jaden, just not able to knock that down. Ball went in and out. Grennan with the three, no good. And a one and done there for the Crusaders. As Clennon now with the ball. Asks for a screen, gets it. Drives into the lane, puts up a floater, and it goes. Tied at six now, or both of these teams. 4-15 remaining in this first quarter. Back come the Crusaders, Alfred. Back to Reeder. Now over to Grennan. Reeder, a little bit of confusion here on offense. Isaac now, back out top to Reeder. Reeder throws the lob for Grennan, throws it down with the big alley-oop, backdoor cut. Quite the play there, Kurt. Beautiful play by the Crusaders. And that's, that's the complacency I was talking about earlier. If you don't mind, watch your P's and Q's you'll find yourself on the receiving end of plays like that now, a little bit too often. Now it looked like there was a bit of confusion to start off with, but was that a, a set play there? I think so, absolutely. Get the ball on the weak side, alley -oop. McDonald being tightly guarded here by Isaac. He'll hand it off to Amoa. Pulls up, picks up his dribble, Carter. Gives it to Clennon. Clennon spots up for the long three and he sinks it. Looked like his foot was on the line, but the refs will give it to him for three as the Bears go back on top, 9-8 now. Reeder barks out the play. The Crusaders can certainly take their time on offense here and, and rest up a little bit. The defense is not that um, aggressive right now for Campion. They get the ball inside. It is Grennan missing the layup, and back come the Bears. And a bad pass there by Jeffrey Amoa, and he'll turn it over back to the Crusaders. Crusaders did a much better job that time getting back on defense to prevent that break. It was a, they had a, the Campion squad had a three on two advantage and were unfortunate that time in completing the play. Subs in now for Carr as Malik Brown checks in for Shane Reeder. And Brown wasn't paying attention there as it's turned over all the way back to the other side with the easy lay-in is Jeffrey Amoa for two, and the Bears now up by three, 11-8. Brown over to Isaac. As the Crusaders try to get set here on offense, they get oh. Brown in the corner. A little bit of confusion once again, Robert, it seems, but finishes well for the Crusaders. Yeah, Elliott dropping the two there, and it's now one point lead for the Bears, 11-10. 2 remaining in this first quarter. Clennon with the ball, drives baseline, right-handed floater goes, tough shot. Beautiful move and finish there on the floater. Grennan now with the ball. Back out top to Brown. Over to Alfred. They get Isaac in the corner here. Fakes a three, but kicks it back out to Alfred. Brown, back over to Alfred. I think they're looking for Grennan again. Brown will trigger a three. 
way off and rebounded by Tashawn Carter. Back comes St. Edmund Campion as Clennon gets it underneath. It's Carter now, kicks it into the corner over to McDonald. McDonald, they get it back to Carter. He's trapped on the baseline there. Nice tight defense by Nathaniel Elliott. Tries to kick it out. The ball is loose on the floor. Picked up, though, by McDonald. They'll say it's a kick ball on Henry Carr, and it'll stay with Campion. Campion fortunate that time to maintain possession of the ball. Carter trying to force the issue on the baseline when he really didn't have anything. Needs to kick the ball out and reestablish their offense. Sub now for Carr as Aaron Emanuel checks in for Malik Alfred. Bears up 13-10, 1-12 remaining in this opening frame. Amoa with the ball, picks up his dribble. Gets it back. Over now to Clennon. Clennon goes one-on-one, -on -one, pull-up jumper for three is good. Another three ball by the Bears, and it's now a six-point lead, 16-10. Clennon can certainly shoot the ball. They're going to have to guard him a little bit more closely than that. Brown. Back out to Emmanuel. He'll swing it over to Isaac, and he'll let a three fly. Comes up way short, and back come the Bears. McDonald trying to get across midcourt. Hounded there by Brown, and we've got a foul. It's going to go against Grennan here. It'll be his first of this contest. 35 seconds remaining in this first quarter, and the Bears now with their biggest lead of the game so far, 16-10. A little bit too aggressive there on that sideline trap. Clennon almost throws the ball away, deflected by Emmanuel, but it'll stay with St. Edmund Campion. Jade McDonald is a, a very solid guard for Campion. He uh, doesn't make a lot of mistakes and uh, is, is very composed in the backcourt. So they're going to have to pick their spots when they're going to go and try and trap him. McDonald's runner off glass, no good, and rebound tapped around. They say it's last touched by a Campion, and it'll now go to Henry Carr. 23 seconds remaining on the clock in this first quarter. As the Crusaders stuck six here, 16-10. Bears staying with that 2-3 zone defense that has worked quite well so far. They might try and go for one here, Robert, with uh, about 10 seconds left. That's certainly what they're going to do. And Emmanuel now with the ball. He drives right in the lane. His floater he gets a friendly roll. It goes down. 16-12 now the lead for Campion. Two seconds remaining on the clock. They've got to get up a shot. And I'm not sure if he got it off in time. Regardless, he didn't get it. And after one quarter of play, it is Campion with the 16-12 lead, Kurt. That's right. Both, both teams, kind of like a boxing match beginning. First quarter, both teams feeling each other out, seeing what the strengths and weaknesses are, and then coming back and determining what their best method is going to be to attack the other team. Besides that uh, nice alley-oop dunk there by Grennan, it looked like the Bears, or I should say the Crusaders, were a little confused on offense on that 2-3 zone defense. Yeah, there were a couple of times there when there was some communication in the backcourt as to what, perhaps what play they were going to run and who was going to be in what situation. But the funny thing is on both those occasions, the Crusaders did come away with a dunk by Grennan and with the three, I, I can't remember who it was that hit it from the corner. Now, what have you liked so far that you've seen from the Bears? The Bears are very composed. They are running their offense. And a lot of instances over the tournament, when you watch high school basketball, sometimes teams get a little frazzled and get out of their offense, and they won't run a lot of one-on-ones and one-on-twos and try to force the issue. Campion was very composed. They ran their offense. As we take a look, as we the, take a look uh, at the first quarter highlights here. Yeah. Teardrop down the middle. He's been very imp impressive. As teams are getting ready for second quarter action here, it is the Bears up 16-12 right now on Henry Carr. And the Bears will start with it. Jordan Clennon inbounding onto the sidelines. He gets it in to Amoa. Amoa drives right in the lane. Baseline all the way to the basket. His layup no good. Rebound tapped around. And it is the Bears coming away with it, but the easy layup there missed by Number 21, Kevin Adifa. Adifa a little bit too strong on the board. Showed a lot of courage and strength in the middle, just not able to finish. Back come the Crusaders. Underneath, it's Isaac laying it in for two, and it's now a two-point deficit for the Crusaders. 16-14 the lead for Campion. They try to double Clannon on out high there, and he gets a cross-court pass to McDonald. He drives right in the lane. No-look pass down there to 
Adifa, but he is fouled. That was a beautiful pass in traffic. And this one will go against Malik Brown, his first, second team foul. Aaron Sawyer is checking in now for the Bears, replacing Kevin Adifa. Bears up 16-12, just about a minute into this second quarter. Cross-court pass, Clennon, he'll put up a three. Tough shot, nice defense there by Grennan. And the Bears throw it away and it'll be Crusaders ball. That was a good wide open shot. That was a good shot for him to take. He's been knocking them down. It just didn't drop for him this time. Manuel comes back for the Crusaders. Isaac now. Back to Emmanuel. Over to Brown. Isaac gives it back to Emmanuel. As the Crusaders trying to look for an opening here with some perimeter passing. Brown will trigger a three from the corner, and he makes it. And that gives the Crusaders now a one-point lead, 17-16. And Henry Carr now with the first five points of this second quarter. Bears now as it's Clennon, or I should say. Amoa gives it off to Clennon now. Clennon, crossover, gets in the lane. We're going to get a hand check here hand check. on Jamal Grennan. Hello. And that's his second foul, this one. A little bit too aggressive there. Not moving the feet, using his hands to try and slow down the, defense, the offensive player. And it looks like Grennan's going to check out now with his two fouls. And in fact, he will stay in as Nathaniel Elliott is replaced by Tremique Sutherland. Grennan's going to have to be careful. It's uh, still early only in the second quarter, and they're going to need him down the stretch. McDonald hounded there by a couple of Henry Carr defenders, and they're going to say it's palming on McDonald. The Crusaders do get the stop and they'll get the ball. Looks like Henry Carr's uh, philosophy at this moment is to just put a lot of ball pressure That's on right. McDonald. I think they're, uh, they're trying to get him frazzled. He, um, as I mentioned before, he's a very good guard and um, he's the engine of this team. So they're hoping that they can get him a little bit frazzled and force him to make some mistakes. They get it into Alfred, but he, or I should say Grennan, but they move it out over to Malik Brown. His three no good. And a rebound last touched by Henry Carr, or make, make that St. Edmund Campion. And Carr will keep the ball. A lot of perimeter shots in the second quarter for Henry Carr, but uh, they have the lead, so I guess you can't really complain. Can't really complain. Well, that's, they're taking what the defense is giving them, and the defense is giving them those, uh, those outside looks. As the Bears now switch to a man-to-man, -man, oh, they reset back to a 2-3 as the shot is missed, but rebounded by Isaac. If you're going to play a zone, Robert, you've got to be able to get those, get those boards when the, when the shots are missed. And now the Bears are in a man as Aaron Emanuel drives the basket, shot is blocked, and back come the Bears. They've got numbers three on two. McDonald stripped, however, and here come the Crusaders. It's Brown. Gets into the lane, picks up his dribble, hands it off to Shane Reeder, or um, Tremik Sutherland, his shot no good. And here come the Bears. McDonald. Hands it off to Amawa. He'll call out a play. Hands it off to Clennon. Clennon crossover to the lane. And we've got a foul. As this looks like it's gonna go against Malik Brown. And Clennon will go to the line to shoot too. Clennon's played. Clennon's played very well this game. As we take a look at the crowd. Basketball enthusiasts on a Sunday afternoon. This game is very important, as was several of the other games, especially if when, when, when we're looking at seeding for OFSA. I am sure that many of these teams will be in that OFSA champ, championship later on this year. And depending on how a team fares in this tournament, will, to some extent, be considered when the... Uh, when the committee looks at offset rankings for that tournament. Clennon splits a pair of free throws. It's now tied at 17 as Campion scores their first point of this second quarter. Five minutes remaining before the half. Campion now in a man-to-man. -man. Before they were, they were comf comfortable and allowing the Crusaders to shoot from outside, but they weren't able to box out. So changing things up a little bit on the defensive end for Campion. 
Turnover on Henry Carr as they get Brown on the discontinued dribble as Tyler Ennis McIntyre will now check in for Brown. Amo with the ball, brings it across the midcourt line. Drives all the way to the basket. His layup goes, and the Bears now with three consecutive points. They've got a two-point lead, 19-17. I'm surprised Coach Melnick is sitting down on that play. I'd be hopping mad. I'm sure they'll hear about that when they go in at halftime. But you can't allow a player to dribble the length of the court and go in for an un seemingly uncontested layup. Alfred gets the bucket, but they'll wave it off, saying that he traveled before the shot. And two empty trips now down the floor for Henry Carr. Looks like they're turning up the defensive heat right now. Full court press, easily broken. Amoa with the ball. Wants to settle things down. They get it to McDonald. McDonald trying to get free. Tushin Carter, his fadeaway off glass goes. Nice soft touch, beautiful shot by Carter. Back up to a four point lead now for the Bears, 21-17. Emmanuel guarded tightly there by McDonald. Isaac. Emmanuel. They get it to Sutherland. Sutherland drives in the lane, loses the handle, taken away by the Bears. McDonald all the way to the basket and gets the easy two to go. Six point lead now for the Bears, 23 17. Back comes Henry Carr. Alfred out to McIntyre. Emmanuel, they swing it over to Isaac. Back out to Alfred. They try to get the high-low feed down there to Emmanuel, but it's deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Henry Carr. Emmanuel's open for a split second. Can't be able to close that out quickly. Good defense. Shane Reeder checks in for Henry Carr, replacing Tremeek Sutherland. As Coach Paul Melnick looking for the right chemistry right now with his five players on the floor. Emmanuel drives into the lane. His runner, no good. Rebound, though. Picked up by Malik Alfred. He goes up strong and is fouled, and he'll go to the line. Campion still having a little bit of a problem down low and making sure that the Henry Carr Crusaders are boxed out. Henry Carr is really crashing the offensive boards, getting second and third chance opportunities. Alfred gets the first one to go, as we'll have another sub here for Henry Carr. Nathaniel Elliott checking in, and he'll replace Aaron Emanuel. 319 remaining in the second quarter. As the Bears have jumped out now to a four point lead with that made free throw by Alfred, 23 19. And back they quickly come. And with the wow. missed layup there all by himself, and he missed it, Kevin and Difa, he'll be kicking himself over that later. As McDonald now has the ball in the recovery. That's uh, Difa's second miss from point blank range. Coach is going to have a talk with him. Moa gets the screen, but hands off to Clennon. Clennon wants to go one-on-one -on -one with McIntyre, gets in the lane. They kick it over to Carter. Now McDonald, his pull-up jumper. One dribble, no, missed. A rebound tapped around, and Elliott comes down the ball. And here come the Crusaders. Alfred, back out to Reeder. They swing it to Elliott. Over to Alfred. Alfred tries to get in, but he's cut off nicely there by Clennon. And it's McIntyre, and it'll be Elliott putting up a three, and he makes it, and that cuts the lead now down to one, 23-22. McDonald quickly back for the Bears. Oh. Almost did the splits there. Almost did the splits and almost had to travel there. It's all right, as the Bears still have the ball. 2.06 remaining in the second quarter. Amoa wants the ISO on McIntyre. Dishes it off to Adifa, and the Bears will reset. McDonald, and we've got a foul on the floor. <laughs> Looks like this is going against Elliott for uh, being a little bit too aggressive off the ball there. Yeah, he, uh, he bumped into Carter, and Carter kind of embellished things a little bit there. 153 remaining in this first half as the Bears lead at 23-22 over Henry Carr in this championship final. Rob Wong joined alongside by Kurt Charter here on Rogers TV. As the referees talk things over, Paul Melnick getting in his two cents here. Paul uh, always has to get in his two cents. As Donovan Patterson, the coach 
of St. Camp St. Edmund Campion wants to know what's going on here as well. Paul's got to be careful because sometimes he puts in 10 cents. Now both coaches having words with each other. The referee there trying to calm both of the uh, coaches down there and they'll get both of them to sit down. And it looks like we can continue this basketball game. A very well played basketball game to this point. Clennon guarded tightly there by McIntyre and they'll get him on the hook. And the Bears will keep the ball here. McIntyre, his first foul of the game. 145 now remaining in the second quarter and the Bears still leading it by 1, 23-22. McDonald has the ball guarded tightly by Isaac. Isaac giving him no room to breathe here. McDonald tries to get the crossover to free things up and we've got a foul. And it's going to be an offensive foul here on Tashawn Carter for the illegal screen. You've got to have both feet set on that screen. You've got to have everything within your body. You can't have anything sticking out and hitting, hitting the defensive player. Seems like it's been a while since the Crusaders have come down on the offensive end of the court as they do now. Breeder gets it to Alfred. Alfred's six-foot jumper goes, and it's now the Crusaders up by 124-23, 125 remaining in this first half. Alfred, no stranger to scoring in this tournament so far, as he's dropped 20 or more points in his last two contests. And the Bears turn it over. A little miscommunication there between Clennon and McDonald. And back comes Henry Carr. Isaac. Over to Elliott, they swing it to McIntyre. He thinks about a three, but decides not to. Gives it back out to Reeder. Looks like they're trying to get Alfred here on the big and little, but they switch off properly. So Carter now guarded by Alfred, or guarding Alfred. McIntyre, he'll shoot a three from the right elbow, and he makes another one. McIntyre not shy so far in this second quarter. Not shy at all. He's a good shooter, pulls the trigger. Good for him. And the Crusaders now 27-23 as we've got a blocking foul here. This is going to go against... I think it's on McIntyre. McIntyre. Another cheap foul. And yeah, well, we're in the bonus situation here. So Omoa will go to the line to shoot one. And if he makes it, he'll get another one. 47 seconds remaining in this first half. As Omoa gets the first one to go. So he'll stay at the charity stripe. His team down by three now, 27-24. Moa sets for the second and misses that one. Rebounded by Elliott. Back comes Henry Carr. Reeder quickly up the court. They get it to McIntyre. He drives baseline. His shot goes, but it's another offensive foul as two players slowly get up here. McIntyre and Amoa, who took the charge. McIntyre quick on the baseline on that move. Pulled up to take the jump, little teardrop shot. Unfortunately, he took it in a bit too deep. Bears trying to inbound the ball. They do. McDonald needs to get it over the midcourt line quickly. It's running out of time. They do get it across. And a bad pass there by Kevin Adifa trying to hit Sean Carter on the baseline cut. And Carter's complaining that it was Henry Carr that touched it last, but to no avail. And it's Henry Carr taking over. 27-24, Carr leads it. 28 seconds remaining in this second half. We'll see if they go for one shot here. As they decide not to, Reeder with the pull-up, Jay goes down. It's another three ball as it's raining threes now for Henry Carr, and it's now a six-point lead, 30-24. Back the other way, McDonald with a quick layup. That cuts it to four. Ten seconds now left on the clock. They get it over to McIntyre. Why not? Another three heat check, no good. On the glass is Isaac, but he can't get it to go. Seconds One second left. left to go, and Adifa just can't buy it and bucket from anywhere. As there's .3 seconds remaining on this clock, he hit the rafters, so Henry Carr will take it up by four, 30-26. Stranger things have happened. Let's see if uh, Carr can actually get a shot off here. As Elliott gets in, a reader attempts to throw the volleyball pass, but it doesn't go. And that's the way this first half ends with Henry Carr storing back in this second quarter to take a four-point lead, 30-26. Frenetic pace at the beginning of this game. But I like the, uh, I like the intensity on both ends. We'll see. Uh, I know that Campion has another level of defensive pressure that they'll put on. We'll see a lot of that in the second half. Well, taking a look at our two key players in this game, what have you seen uh, you like so far from Jamal Grennan? 
besides the two fouls that he unfortunately picked up in that first quarter, not much. Uh, well, we, really saw, doing, right? we certainly saw the display of his hops on that uh, weak side alley-oop, but uh, we'll talk more about that after the break. All right, you're watching the 50th annual St. Michael's College Basketball Invitational right here on a Rogers TV. College as we get set for third quarter action here in the championship final between Henry Carr and St. Edmund as you can see right here the Crusaders leading it 30-26 and uh, Kurt a, a pretty good first half by both of these teams. Frenetic pace in the first half Campion showing a lot of composure Crusaders Crusaders doing what the Crusaders do turning up the defensive heat looking for their shots down low crashing the boards doing a lot of the fundamentals that it takes to, to win a game. As we see them in the paint there, scoring on that one. Hitting the outside shot. Deep three from the corner. There's to Sean Carter hitting Carter. the shot there, yeah. And on the steal, not many, not many looks like that for them this game, though. The champion, that is. Malik Alfred hitting the jumper there, one of the uh, key players for Henry Carr, who have uh, dominated this tournament, not last year, but the uh, previous four years, winning four consecutive tournaments between 2005 and 2008. And just talking to head coach Paul Melnick before this game, you know, he looked upbeat and, you know, he looked pretty confident that his uh, team was going to take the title here today. They certainly have the horses to do it. The key for Campion this half, as far as I can tell, would be, will be to be able to manage the pressure that Carr is going to throw at them because at the end of the first half, they had about three or four turnovers in a row. And Carr is going to keep bringing it because they can. And they're fairly deep. I think they go about three or four or five maybe deep on their bench. So they have the legs to, to bring in and continue the pressure. And if Campion, Campion can handle the pressure, they'll be in uh, pretty decent shape. So we take a look at the coach for Campion, getting his troops ready for this half. Just waiting for the officials to return to the court here as the players are all set and ready to go. Henry Carr will start with the ball here in the second half. They're up 30-26, and it looks like the Bears have returned to that 2-3 zone. As Elliott with the ball, he swings it to Isaac. Corner three there is no good, and the ball tapped around. Rebound ripped down by Clennon. Clennon, quick pass ahead to McDonald. To Sean Carter. Managing to hold on to the ball as now Campion will get set. And Henry Carr now in a 2-3 zone of themselves. Clennon now, he'll shoot a three. Can't get that one to go. Rebound picked up by Elliott. Reeder over to Isaac. Gets it back to Reeder. Reeder looking for somebody, gets Alfred. He drives in the lane, kick out to Grennan out in the corner. Brennan will bring it back out, but he drives in the lane, and we've got a foul here. Push, and it looks like this might go against Campion's number three, Jordan Clennon. Nice drive by Grennan there to get into the key. That's where you want to score from. You don't want to rely on the outside jump shot for the entire game as we watch one being launched. And quickly back is Campion all the way to the hoop. McDonald with another easy two, and that's the first two points of this second half, and Campion now trailing 30-28. One of the things about taking those outside shots is that if you're going to take too many of those, you're going to have to hit a high percentage. If you're not hitting a high percentage, we'll see what just happened to the Crusaders, where there's a long rebound, and you've got all of a sudden you've got yourself a three-on-one or a two-on-none, ending up in a layup on the other end. Well, barely two minutes old into this second half, and Coach Paul Melnick already getting a little fired up about his team's play. As Reeder gets it over to Isaac, they get it to Grennan. Swing it back around. Reeder looking to try to penetrate this 2-3 zone. Isaac, they get it now to Elliott. Elliott wants Alfred in the high post as they're trying to run a play here. They're being very patient. 
Reeder now gets it back to Isaac. He thinks about a three. Gives it back to Reeder. Skip pass now to Elliott. They're trying to catch Campion asleep on the weak side by rotating the ball. But Campion's playing uh, very disciplined right now. Isaac, he'll trigger a three, lets that one fly, and that one goes down. And after the uh, Crusaders had the ball there for about 40 seconds, they come away with a three-pointer, and it's now a five-point lead, 33-28. Here comes Campion, Clennon drives in the lane, nice, nice pass, pass underneath there, put home by Kevin Adifo, who didn't make too many of those in the first half. <laughs> That's right, he actually missed two from that same point blank range spot so good to see him getting those hands ready to put that basket in and the bears now on defense here's grinnon trying to drive baseline lost his footing a little bit and we're going to get a travel started slipping lost control and he's slow to get up but he looks like he's all right uh, he's good to go Henry Carr still up by three, 33-30, 5-18 left to go in this third quarter. Carr staying in that 2-3 zone. McDonald with the ball. Over to Clennon, back to McDonald. They play a game of catch. He'll shoot a three, gets that one to go. Gives a little fist pump afterwards as well, and why not? He ties this game up at 33. He, he can shoot that three ball. And another three ball here. Isaac lets that one go in and out. And on the glass there is Grennan. And we're going to get a foul here. And it looks like it's going to go against Grennan, Grennan over the back as the two officials talk about it. And that would be his third. Coach might want to send him down. It's early in the second half. And one of their main players has three fouls. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops. This game tied up at 33s as McDonald. Gives it back to Amoa. McDonald. Sets things up. Over to Carter. Carter skipped past McDonald. Another outside shot. That one for three. No good. Underneath it is Deshaun Carter putting home the board. As I mentioned before the, the game started. He's, ha he's someone you're going to have to keep a body on because he's big and strong, takes up a lot of room in the paint. And if you're not careful, he's going to gobble up a lot of those offensive rebounds. And on a turnover there by Henry Carr, Campion will take over once again as Jamal Grennan, now with three fouls, will sit down. As we take a look at McDonald dropping a three-pointer, something he's done quite often in this contest. Clennon will shoot a three as well. Can't get that one to go. Weak side of rebound picked up by Elliott. And back comes Henry Carr. Isaac gets into the paint. Dumps it off to Holder. Holder, nice pass. And it's Alfred blocked by Carter, but they'll say they got, got him on the hand and a push. And Alfred heads to the line for two. Carter felt that he barely touched him, but he's so big and strong, it doesn't take much of a touch from Carter to knock somebody on their keister. Alfred held off uh, the score sheet so far in this game. He scored 23 in the semifinal victory over Pickering and 25 in the quarterfinal win over Eastern Commerce. He gets one to go there. Looking to tie this game up if he can make the second one. Comes up short. So Campion still leads at 35-34. 3.55 left to go in this third frame. Amoa hands off to McDonald. Back to Amoa. He gets in the lane. Gives it off to Carter, trapped on the end line. Back out to McDonald, he fakes the three, tries to go left, loses his handle a little bit, and has to reset things. They get it to Omoa. As it's now Clennon. Clennon, they get it inside to Carter. He drives hard to the hoop, and his shot nice, goes. Nice finish by Carter. Good patience shown at that time by the Campion Bears. 37-34 now the lead for Campion. As the Bears play a man-to-man -man defense, Alfred off the glass, way off. Holder with the rebound underneath, though, can't get it to go. And back comes the Bears. Whoa. And a tough pass there, but nice recovery by Amoa. Not quite sure how he managed to keep himself in bounds. Like a water bug there, nice spin <laughs> move to get free. McDonald in the lane, kicks it out to Clennon. He drives baseline, his runner, no good. Rebound underneath, though, Adifa. Now over to Clennon. 
As the Crusaders now in a man-to-man -man themselves. Carter. Looking for a teammate, gets Adifa. Nice spin move down low, and he gets the nice shot to go in. 39-34 now the lead for Campion. Good patience by the Campion Bears, getting that ball down low for the turnaround by Adifa. 2-18 remaining in this third quarter. Elliott now. Looks like he's trying to get Holder down low. Instead, he'll kick it back out to Reeder. Reeder with a little hesitation dribble. They now get it to Holder underneath, and we've got a late call here. And it looks like this one is going to go against the Difa. The defense collapsed nicely that time. And we've got a timeout on the floor as Campion wants to talk things over. They're up by five right now, 39-34, 2.05 remaining in this third quarter. As the... Crusaders really having a tough time on offense at this moment, especially with uh, Jamal Grennan sitting on the bench with three fouls. That's right. They're having a difficult time trying to get the ball inside, and the shots are falling intermittently. Not just uh, here we see Adifa powering up inside. Taylor, two halves so far for him. First half couldn't get anything to go. That's right. Down low. He said everything this half that he's tried. So I guess that little pep talk to himself has worked out as the Bears... Lead at 39-34, 2.05 left to go in at this third quarter. Colin Holder getting ready to step to the line to shoot two free throws. I anticipate the Crusaders turning up the defensive heat, probably full court, depending on whether or not these shots are made. Holder ready for the first. And not a very good shot there, bad that, form. That ball had no chance. As it almost banked in, but still. You got to call those banks, though, don't you? I think if you call them, they will go, but I didn't hear them, so <laughs> I, don't, I think that's why it didn't go in. Second one up. A little softer touch on that one. As we have a sub for Henry Carr, and it will be Holder checking out for Aaron Emanuel. With that one free throw, it's now a four-point lead for Campion, 39-35. McDonald now with the ball. Gets it to Clennon. Clennon drives baseline, cut off, but he kicks it out. It's Amoa for three. He misses underneath to Sean Carter with the offensive board. Gobbling up yet another offensive board for Campion is Carter. Clennon, make that Amoa, breaking. gets into the lane, and we've got a foul. This one's going to go against Elliott. Nice job breaking down the defense with a dish off there. We've seen a lot of that from Amoa so far in this third quarter. You can't really double him because he's somehow finds a way to sneak out of them. That's right. Moa now with the ball. Once again, gets into the paint to Sean Carter, kicks it over to Clennon. Clennon drives baseline. His right-handed runner, no good. Rebound tapped around. And it is Carr coming away with the ball. Isaac back to the other way. And the last touch there by Moa. It's been all over the court in this third quarter. 123 remaining in this third quarter. Campion still up by four, 39-35. Campion uh, at this stage seemed to be just a little bit faster to the loose balls than the Crusaders. Really hustling on just about every play. Elliott with a jumper from 15, and it gets the nice friendly roll to go down, and that cuts the deficit to two now. Sean Carter gets to Difa. Amoa. As they call out a play, Amoa guarded tightly there by Emmanuel. And we five, got a five seconds second unguarded. Call. Yeah. Five seconds closely guarded, I should say. Don't think we'll see that very often from Amoa. He's pretty active with his dribble. Yes, he is. The, the offense that time seemed to be pretty stagnant. I don't, I'm not sure that they knew what, exactly what play they were supposed to be running. Elliott triggers another jumper. No good. Rebound, though, by Shane Reeder. He gets it to go, and it's now tied at 39. 35 seconds left to go in this third quarter. Carter brings it across the midcourt line, and he throws it off Reeder's leg. Kick ball. Stays with Campion. 31 seconds now left on the clock. Clennon inbounding on the sidelines, gets it in. Adifa back to Clennon. And a miscommunication there on the switch off as they get it to 
Now to Sean Carter underneath. He goes up strong. No good. Adifa with the board and stripped away by Malik Alfred. And here come the Crusaders. Isaac with a nice spin move in the lane. And it's an offensive foul. They, wow. They'll say he pushed Clennon off. And Isaac not sure about that one. His arm came out. I don't, I'm not I'm, I think it came out because he wanted to keep his balance. I'm not quite sure that was intentional. But to the ref, it looked as though he's, he cleared him out on the spin dribble. Ten seconds left to go in this third quarter. Amoa being hounded right now. And we've got a timeout by the Bears as they will try to get some offense uh, going here before the end of the quarter as it's 39-39 right now. As we check out what happened here. Spin. I think from the ref's angle, that looked like a clear out. From more angle, it really didn't look like it. So I, I, I can understand why he's a little incensed with the call. And Isaac, yeah, not too happy about that one. But he should be happy with the score somewhat as his team is still tied with Campion. 39 apiece right now. Seven seconds left to go, or 7.4 seconds to be more specific in this third quarter as Campion will get one last shot here. Uh, trying to take the lead going into the final frame of this championship final. They got to be careful with this inbound pass so close to. OK, that, that made it easy. And they get it into Clennon. He spins in the lane out to Adifa, who takes a three, comes up way short. Not really his game, Kurt. Probably not the person you wanted to take that last shot from that far out. As that's the way this quarter ends, 39 apiece. As we get ready to go to the fourth quarter in this championship final, uh, Kurt, you said it from the beginning that this was going to go down to the wire. This and is. This is. And it looks like your prediction is uh, might come true. Well, I, I, every now and then I hit one, Robert. As we will have fourth quarter action coming up shortly. 39 apiece right now between the Crusaders and the Bears. It's been a tough go so far for Henry Carr as Jamal Grennan, one of their key players in this game, has been in quite a bit of foul trouble. Taking a look at third quarter highlights here, Adifa working uh, down low. He's had a big third quarter. McDonald also hitting the outside shot. He needs to be freed up a little bit more frequently for that shot because he, he's got a good shot. Malik Alfred, who has uh, had no trouble scoring in the last couple games, having trouble today as Adifa there with another lay-in. And you said it, Kurt, that uh, these Campion Bears look very composed and they don't look to be uh, very frazzled at all in this contest so far. That's right. Well, here we go. The final eight minutes to determine the champion for bragging rights, 50th annual St. Michael's Blue Raider basketball tournament. And it comes down to these final eight minutes. There's the trophy. That's what they're fighting for today. And we are underway in this final frame. Clennon drives in the lane. His runner goes. Nice athletic move. He likes that move, and it works well for him. Good drive that time. And the referees want to talk things over. And it looks like we might have a foul here on Tashawn Carter. Delay of, oh, delay of game warning on Tashawn Carter. He's got to leave that ball when it comes through the hoop. And 41-39 is the lead for the Bears. The next time that occurs, there will be a technical foul. So Jamal Grennan checking back in with his three fouls, replacing Aaron Emanuel. As he's been sitting on that bench for quite a while. Might be a little cold coming into this fourth frame. He's an explosive offensive player. But you're right, he's a uh, nice drive. Finishing with a left hand on the, on the far side. A yeah, nice explosive move there by Reeder, and that tied things up, ties things up at 41. McDonald. Couple of dribble moves, gets it out to Clennon. He drives quickly in the lane, and we've got a foul. And it looks like the hoop won't count. The hoop will not count. And they'll inbound it on the end line. And this is going to go against uh, Raheem Isaac. I've been very impressed with Clennon. I like his outside shot, and I like his ability to get into the paint and score, especially with that nice little teardrop that he has. Well, the guard play definitely has been key today for the Campion Bears. As any one of those three, Amoa, Clennon and McDonald can handle the ball, but Clennon can't handle it there. Taken away by Isaac. He goes all the way to the hoop for the lay-in. And it's now a two-point lead for Henry Carr, 43-41. Well, here comes the defense by the Crusaders. 
Not too many teams adept at handling the pressure that they bring, and they bring a lot of it. Amoa with a tough runner in the lane. How did that get in? Went from one side to the other, turned at the last second, banked it off the glass, and that tie thing ties things up at 43. Alfred with the ball. He wants to go one on one. Takes a deep end of the paint, drops it underneath to Isaac. Back to Alfred. His fadeaway jumper rattles home. Gets and the Alfred. shooter's bounce. Soft touch. Nice finish. And maybe that'll get Alfred going. Moa hands it off to McDonald. McDonald asks for the screen from Adifa. Tough pass there, but it's recovered. He got away Moa. with one. You can't throw those types of passes against the Crusaders. They'll make you pay. Clennon drives in the lane, loses the handle, and back comes Henry Carr, but bad pass there, and it's taken away by Campion. And we'll take a timeout here. 30-second timeout call by the Campion coach. As it's a 45-43 lead right now for Henry Carr. As both teams look a little bit nervous coming out in this fourth quarter here. And here's Amoa. Nice move down the middle. Changes his body around. Gets around the defense. Hard to stop that kind of shot. Kind of looked there as if uh, he kind of forgot what he wanted to do. And then at the last second, he just threw it in. That's right. So what the coach is doing right now, because I really haven't seen a set offense. I've seen snippets of it every now and then by, uh, by the Bears. So the coach is right now trying to get them to run something. Maybe occasionally you've got to play and, and, and the, uh, the team doesn't have a lot of confidence in it depending on who you're playing against. And this Crusaders team is a very good, athletic, strong team. So maybe they don't have a lot of confidence in that offense. So maybe he's trying to throw something out else out there that they can run. So Campion will inbound the ball down to 45-43. Beautiful play. And a beautiful inbounds play as Adifa finishes it with an easy lay-in for two. Just like the coach drew up on the board. Back comes Henry Carr. Alfred drives in the lane. His left-handed layup no good. And loose ball on the floor taken away by Deshaun Carter. He doesn't lose a lot of those battles. Ball saved inbounds there by Watch out. Jeffrey Amoa. And a nice finish there by Campion as McLennan, or Clennon rather, gets the two to go. 47-45 now for Campion. Brennan out to Isaac. Reader now, they get it to Alfred. Alfred fakes the three. Brennan has it. Over to Isaac. Isaac looking for some help, gets it to Grennan. Grennan fakes the shot, drives baseline, cut off nicely there by Adifa. I think he changed pivot feet and got away with one there. It's now shot from the corner way off there by Nathaniel Elliott. Back the other way, Campion, McDonald underneath, puts up a shot, no good, tried to draw the contact but didn't get the call. Looking for the referee to bail him out, and that one he should have just gone straight up. And pass tapped in the air. Loose ball on the floor, picked up by Campion. It's Amoa splitting the D with a nice crossover. Kicks it out. Free ball from Clannon. And no good. Underneath, though, it's Deshaun Carter with the offensive board. Put back is good. And that fires up his teammates on the bench. And his team now has a four-point lead, 49-45. Back the other way. Grennan spin move into the paint, no good. Asking the referee to bail him out in that call. It was a one-on-two. He really should have pulled that ball out and run, run on offense. Clannon. Gets in the paint, dumps it off underneath to Adifa, but it's an offensive foul on Clennon. Charge taken there by Grennan. Grennan was sized up the play and was planted there for a good second and a half before the offensive player arrived. Good defensive play. As we take a look at the crowd, and uh, lots of people here in attendance, and why not? It is the championship final, and they are getting quite the game right now as Campion leads at 49-45 over Henry Carr. Four minutes left to go in this third, fourth quarter, I should say. Two of the best teams in the province showing off their skills before the audience today. McIntyre and Emmanuel just checked in, and McIntyre gives Emmanuel the ball. He drives in the paint. His runner off window is good. Tough shot, and he gets it to go. Tough shot. Good finish. You don't want to rely on that type of shot every time down the court, though. They need to run on offense. As it's now Clennon with the ball, guarded by Emmanuel. They get it to Carter. Carter swarmed there by Isaac. 
Tries to kick it out, got himself caught in the air, but he got away with one as it's Adifa with the 15-footer, no good. Looked like he didn't want to take it, but he was so wide open that he felt he had to. I think he could have probably taken another couple of dribbles and gotten in the paint. As Emmanuel now with the ball, gives it up to McIntyre. He's been hot from outside in this game. Brennan drives in the lane, out to Isaac. He'll hand it off to Reeder. Brennan now drives in the paint, and we've got a travel on Brennan. Nice active hands there by Carter to force the travel. Brennan not happy with the call. I actually thought he got bumped, and that's what caused the travel, but referee saw it differently. And we'll there have we a look at it here, as there was quite a bit of contact. There was, but I think the referee thought that he initiated that contact. That's why he didn't get the call. And back the other way, it's Adifa missing the initial layup, but he gets fouled on the second attempt. And he'll head to the line for two with his team up to 49-47. Just 2.51 left to go in this fourth quarter of this championship final. Grennan picks up his fourth foul. That was a frustration foul by him. He's got, to, uh, he's got to think a little bit more carefully before he commits a foul like that because the Crusaders need him on the floor. And there's a good chance that he's going to check out now as Malik Alfred has walked up to the scorer's table. And they will sub each other out. Un unfortunate for the Crusaders because he, Grennan, one of their key offensive players, grabs a lot of boards for them and is one of the leaders by his actions on the court. Not able to really contribute that much this game. And Adifa makes both free throws to give his team a four-point lead now, 51-47. 2.45 left to go in the fourth. Alfred over to McIntyre. Adifa did make both those free throws, didn't he? He did. He didn't think he would based on that shot that he took just a while ago, but he did. Good and for him. And back comes Emmanuel. He drives into the lane, and we've got a foul. And this is going to go against Tashawn Carter. They'll say it's on the floor, so Carr will inbound it on the end line. It's a four-point game with 2.36 left on the clock. Things are going to get really frenetic here in a hurry. And they get an inbounds to Isaac. Now over to Reeder. Manuel dishes it over to McIntyre. As Clennon is staying really tight on him, no one about his three-point prowess. Manuel. Now Alfred. Alfred with a nice pump fake and drive. They get it out to McIntyre. Why not? He's the three-point trigger man of this team, but he misses there, and back comes Campion. All the way to the basket. That's the long rebound. That's the long rebound I was talking about before when you take an outside shot from that far out. Often it ends badly. Back the other way quickly is Henry Carr. Emmanuel drives to the hoop. Carter thought he got a block on that one clean, but the refs thought a little too much body. I thought he was in great position. He went straight up, but the, what he did that uh, got him the foul was he followed through. If he just kept his arm straight up, I don't think the ref would have called that. So Emmanuel looking to make two here to cut into that six-point deficit right now for Carr. And he'll get the first one. 53-48 now. Just 2-0-2 two, oh, two remaining in this fourth quarter. Here come the Heat. We'll see how Campion responds to the pressure that Carr will undoubtedly bring right now. And Emmanuel can't get the free throw to go, and Isaac misses the tip. Looked like all the Campion players fell asleep, forgot it was the second free throw. But they catch a lucky break as they're up five right now, 53-48. Carter gets it to Adifa. Amoa. Trying to free himself up as Emmanuel tried to fake that he got hit in the face there. And we've got a travel here on Adifa. Adifa needs to just go straight up with that ball. Not too many people under there can keep, keep up with him, especially with um, Grennan on the bench. 140 left to go in this contest. Emmanuel with the ball over to McIntyre as Carr is down by five. Reader to Alfred. Time's running out for the Crusaders here. McIntyre, back to, back to McIntyre now with the ball. And we've got a foul here. It's going to go against McDonald as he was running by. Hack McIntyre on the arm, and he'll go to the line to shoot. The bonus situation. Campion's really playing into the hands of the Crusaders right now. Campion has the lead, so the clock is their enemy. They can't afford to stop the clock with these types of fouls. 
Now, understandably, in a championship final, you want to go with your best. Have you been surprised at all that Campion has gone, you know, so short on their bench and only used two players? Oh, not at all. They're, uh, they're playing with the guys that, that got them here. No one's really in foul trouble for Campion, as far as I can remember. And it's kind of tough sometimes to bring in a player off the bench and have them stay in the same sort of rhythm that the team had developed. So. And we got a timeout on the floor as Campion had trouble inbounding the ball, and the coaches figured it's safer to take a timeout than risk turning it over. As Campion only leading it now 53-50 with a buck 19 remaining in the fourth quarter of this championship final. So they called the timeout before the ball was actually thrown in. Is that what you I, saw? I, I believe so. Because it's, it's kind of tough having to throw the ball back in from your baseline when you don't have, you can't run the baseline after that timeout. So we'll see how that develops. Coach developing a play here for the full court pressure that's about to come, and it's going to come really hard and consistently. We'll see how they handle it. To break any press, you're going to have to try and get the ball in the middle. You want to try and avoid dribbling down the sideline. You can pass down the sidelines by trying to avoid dribbling down that sideline. And you want to pass the ball more often than you're dribbling it. So coach is trying to get people to come to the middle of the court to receive that ball and then turn around and decide what to do to make good decisions. As the players get ready to come back on the court here, it is Henry Carr down by three, 53-50. 119 remaining in this final quarter. Crunch time, as they say. And Campion will inbound from their own baseline. Carr, of course, coming with that full court pressure, looking to force a turnover here. Clennon, ball tapped in the air. And it's recovered by Clennon, last touched by McIntyre. We'll do this again. As the car almost came away with a turnover there, but just couldn't squeeze the orange. And ball tapped in the air once again. Once Carter, again. Ooh, got lucky there. And lucky to come away with the ball. Clennon now with the ball. Gives it up to McDonald. As Campion will settle things down here, just 105 remaining in the fourth quarter. They're in no hurry. Isaac with very tight defense. They're a little too tight as he gets called for the hook and the hold. He's got to be careful about that five-second closely guarded call. As Campion will get the ball, they're not yet in the bonus. 103 remaining now. Next foul, they will be in the bonus, however. Inbound now to Tashawn Carter. Tashawn has great hands. Carter. They're fortunate to have a guy like that in the middle. Clennon. Drives to the bucket, nice runner with the right hand. Gets it to go, five point lead, 55-50. And clock is running down here, 50 seconds left to go. Crusaders running out of time. Ball deflected out of bounds there by Campion. And Henry Carr will keep it. And Campion has not had an easy road to this championship final or in this championship game, playing some of the best teams in the GTA. Beating an undefeated Oakwood team in the semifinals. Now taking on Henry Carr as Emmanuel has the ball. He'll shoot a three, way short. Long rebound picked up by Carr. It's Isaac, and he'll let another three fly. Gets out when it go. And what a big shot there by Isaac, and that gives it Carr. Now a two-point deficit, 55-53. 34 seconds now left in this fourth quarter. Big shot. Campion fell asleep. They played into the hands. Carr played into the hands of Campion. They made them take... The first outside shot, unfortunately, they weren't able to box out. You've got to do the little things when it comes down the stretch. Put a body on somebody, anybody, find somebody. They left the man open, he gets the rebound. Three-point swing. Well, I've seen a lot of those long rebounds in this game for Henry Carr with their three-point shooting, and they uh, got lucky on that one. That's right. As uh, it's 55-53 right now for Campion. 34 seconds left to go in this championship final. Carr looking to win another St. Mike's Invitational Tournament. They didn't win last year. Eastern Commerce took home the hardware. But they did the four previous years to that. So they are no stranger to winning this tournament. A testament to the Crusader program over the years. Very well coached teams. So Campion will inbound the ball. And it's knocked away by... Henry Carr stays with Campion. Now, Kurt, how, uh, how long do you wait before you start fouling here if you're Henry Carr? I think once the ball gets in, if... 
as taken away by Henry Carr, and the shot does not count. They'll say the foul's on the floor. <laughs> Bunch of the players on the Henry Carr bench in disbelief. They thought it should have been continuation. Paul Melnick did as well. That's right. You know, one, one thing that, that young players forget when the ball goes through the hoop and you take it out of bounds, you can run the length of that baseline. The last couple of times, the, the offensive player has stood close to the hoop. It's hard to throw an inbounds pass from there. As we see the first hoop being made, it's now a one-point game, and the pressure is not going to go away. Yeah, you have to figure it just gets tighter and tighter here. As Emmanuel readies for the second. Puts it up, back rim no, and rebound fought for, and it's taken away by Adifa. He almost threw it away. McDonald now with the ball. Back he comes the other way. Surrounded right now. Oh. And it's going to be a foul here. That was an easy call to make. As McDonald will go to the line for the bonus. And we'll get this one on Malik Alfred. These two points are very important. Just a one-point lead for Campion as McDonald steps to the line, 55-54. And we've got a timeout here as it looks like Paul Melnick wants to talk things over. They have to decide how are they going to manage the, the pressure that's probably going to come from Campion as we take a look. Swarmed by three Crusaders players. Definitely contact on that play. As we now take a look at the huddle right now in the Campion for the Campion side. Take they a look. look at Coach Sanj Alhotra. And you know what's surprising? Only 21 seconds left to go. They've got a one point lead in this championship final. And Kurt, like you said all game, they, they just look calm and composed. That's right. Only a couple of instances during this game when I thought they looked a little frazzled, but for the most part, they handled the uh, Crusaders' pressure very well, better than most teams. So McDonald stepping to the line to shoot one and one here with his team up by one. He's got to make both of these. He's got to be feeling the pressure on this one. First one up. And can't oh, get it to go, rebounded. That's a worst case scenario by Isaac. For, 18 for the seconds Bears. now left on the clock. Back comes Henry Carr. Reader all the way oh. to the basket and rejected by Tyshawn Carter. You've Carter gotta be kidding me. All over that one. As the crowd goes wild on that one, and why not? Take another look at, look at that. Here we go. Absolutely Lining ridiculous. Up. Get that block. stuff out of here. And what a pressure play there by Tashawn Carter as that keeps his team up by 155-54. 14.9 remaining on the game clock. Unfortunately, wasn't able to keep that ball inbounds, however, as Carr will now get the ball. That's why that, that, those free throws were so important for the Campion Bears. And I, I had fully expected that um, Jaden McDonald would hit at least one of those shots because now the Crusaders could potentially win with just a two-point shot. It could come on a, on a putback. It could come on a deflection. It, as long as the ball goes through the hoop, they can win. If he, if he had hit all, th all two of his shots, then they would need to definitely work and look for a three. But at this stage, they have to work with what they have, and they've got to contest everything with everything that they have. Now, if you're the Campion Bears coaching staff, do you tell your players to switch all screens and... Absolutely no uncontested looks whatsoever. And for heaven's sakes, one thing they have been doing well all game, put a body on somebody when that ball goes up and get the rebound. All right, well, Henry Carr back on the floor. Still have the ball in the offensive zone. They're down by one, 55-54. 14.9 remaining in this fourth quarter of this championship final. And we've got another timeout here as Coach Paul Melnix wanted to see what Campion was going with defensively. Typically speaking, I, I like to see, especially in high school, I, under, under our hoop, um, I know our philosophy is we, we want a 2-3 zone, some sort of zone under your hoop. That way you don't have to worry as much about screens and, and switches and, and that sort of thing. As we take another look at that great block by Carter. Getting up, getting up really high for that uh, potentially game-saving block. Well, he was 
the key player of the game for Campion before we started this broadcast and definitely showed it there. Let's see if the Campion Bears run the same type of defense here or whether uh, Coach Malhotra was also playing mind games. Campion now. It looks as though they're still in a man. Looks like they'll stay in that man as they get the ball inbound to Isaac. Nobody guards him. Uncontested three, comes up short. Gets his own rebound, however. Ten seconds left to go. He'll let another one fly and makes it. Are you kidding me? Wow. Raheem Isaac with the clutch three-pointer from the corner. Big, big shot. My goodness, what a finish we have here today. Missed the first one when he was wide open, and the second one he had a man flying at him, and he made it. You have to have some pretty major kahunas to step back up to the plate and take that second shot. 57-55 now after that unbelievable three-pointer by Raheem Isaac. 6.3 now remaining on the clock as we check out this unbelievable shot once again. Picked up his own rebound, just decided to turn and fire. Bottom of the net. Nothing but net. Huge fist pump afterwards. That shows the type of confidence that he has to be able to turn around and take another look at that shot. The crowd still buzzing over what they just saw. As Raheem Isaac. Actually, they looked a little subdued. When that ball went through the hoop, they were all over the place. I saw hands flying. I think I saw some hats <laughs> flying, people swaying in the audience. I think they're just in the afterglow now. We got 6.3 seconds left. Campion will get the ball. They've got to go the length of the court here. 6.3. Five, 57, 55 is the score a in two, favor of Henry Carr. A two will tie it. A three will win it. They have to go the length of the court. And you have to figure this is the game right here. As they inbound to the ball to Adifa, five seconds left to go, and he throws it away. Throws it away. Reader has it. Isaac will run out the clock, That's and that the is the way this one ends. Henry Carr with the three-pointer for Mahim Isaac with six seconds left to go. That wins at 57-55 the final, and Henry Carr has won another St. Mike's Invitational Basketball Tournament in the 50th year of this prestigious event. Only fitting for the team that's won it five out of the last six years. An unbelievable game. Tough break for the Campion, however, as they played quite the game for most of this contest until that Raheem Isaac three, which just broke their back. They sure did. The one thing, my kudos to the, the Crusaders because even when they were down, and they were down by a few points with only a few seconds left in the game, they were composed like champions. Not a problem. We just turn up the defensive heat. We'll get ourselves a, a couple of good looks. We'll get ourselves a couple of steals. And that's exactly what they did. Well, it's only fitting that the uh, arguably the best game of this tournament was the championship final. As Carr takes it 57-55, Raheem Isaac. I would say take the arguably out of there. So well, definitively, it is the best game of this tournament. And we'll have more when we return here. 57-55, Henry Carr takes the St. Mike's Invitational. And we'll have more here on a Rogers TV when we return.
back to St. Michael's College. As you see, the champions there, the Henry Carr Crusaders, after a 57-55 win over the St. Edmund Campion Bears. Raheem Isaac named tournament MVP, and why not? As he hit the biggest shot of his life, a uh, game-winning three-pointer there with six seconds left to go on the clock to give his team that two-point win. Well, Kurt, you said uh, this was the best game of the tournament. Tough to argue with uh, you there. I mean, somebody had to lose, and unfortunately it was Campion, but uh, what a great game by Carr. Yeah, easily the best game of the tournament. Henry Carr, Crusaders, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. We had, um, we had ties down the, several ties down the stretch. Big shots down the stretch by, especially by the MVP of the tournament. Great game as by Jaden McDonald there. Jaden had a, had a great game, as you just said. There's Malik knocking one down from the paint. Not a lot of paint shots during this game. Malik with another jumper there. He was stellar in this tournament for Carr. All tournament long, Raheem Isaac there. And Carr able to do it with one of their studs, uh, Grennan on the bench for the major part of the game with four fouls and foul trouble early on in the game. Did you see Isaac there? That was the shot. Making one of his big three-pointers of the game. And there it is right there, the game-winning shot. Something that he'll remember for the rest of his life. As the players Get to celebrate now, Henry Carr with the big 57-55 win at the 50th annual St. Mike's College Invitational. And uh, you know what? I, <laughs> we asked for a good game, and I think we got it in this one. We got an excellent game. Definitely. We had uh, a lot of athleticism. We had uh, a lot of defense. We had a lot of drama with uh, the score tied down the stretch. And the Crusaders winning as much as they have won in the past, finding a way to get it done in the final moments of the game. Yeah, well, not surprising that Henry Carr wins this one, their fifth championship here at the St. Mike's Invitational in six years. They're back on top once again, 57-55, the final for the Crusaders. On behalf of Kurt, a Rogers TV crew, and myself, Rob Wong, thanks for watching from St. Michael's College.